Hi everyone, my name is Lenti, your lenticular guru on YouTube. In this video, I will teach you how to make a lenticular print with a flip effect. Before we get into the details let's have an overview of what we are going to cover. In this tutorial, we will go through the following steps. 1. Choosing two pictures to flip. 2. Choosing the flip direction. 3. Choosing the lenticular lens. 4. Performing pitch test. 5. Interlacing the pictures. 6. Laminating the lenticular lens onto the interlaced picture. Choosing pictures for flipping. In theory, you can choose any two pictures to flip between them. But in practice, there are a few guidelines that will help you make a clean flip that is crisp and free from ghosting. What is ghosting anyway? Ghosting is the phenomenon when one image is shadowed through to another image that it's not supposed to appear. For example, on this print, we have a yellow square as image A and a black circle as image B. Ideally we should only see the yellow square or only the black circle depending on the viewing angle. But as you can see the black circle shadows through and ghosts into the yellow square and vice versa. To avoid ghosting we should choose images that don't have a big contrast. In this tutorial, we are going to use two pictures of my dog, Crouton. Crouton is a little cute corgi, and we are going to make him even cuter once the project is done. Choosing the flipping direction. In general, for small prints that you can pick up and hold in your hand the flipping direction can be either left and right or up and down. But for big prints that are wall mounted or displayed outdoors, left and right makes more sense and the images will change when people walk by or move their heads left and right. You don't want the viewers to keep nodding their heads right? Choosing the lenticular lens. Lenticular lenses come with different line densities, from the very coarse 10 lines per inch to the very fine 100 LPI. The choice of line density depends on the print size. For small prints such as business cards and postcards that can be held by hand, you should choose a lens with a higher density, say 50 or 75 LPI. But for big prints with long viewing distances, 20 LPI or even lower will be better. If you don't follow this rule you will have a small print with a very pixelated picture or a big print that changes too quickly and unnaturally. In this tutorial, we are going to use 20 LPI for a left and right 8x10 print. 8x10 is an ideal size because it's small enough to be held by hand and also big enough to be mounted on the wall. In this regard, we can choose either 20 LPI or 50 LPI. We do sell lenses and double-sided adhesives online. You can order them by going to the address on the screen. Pause the video and write down the address if you want to buy the material for this tutorial. Performing the pitch test. A pitch test is required because neither the lens density nor the printer's resolutions are exactly what the manufacturers claim they are. For example, a 20 LPI lens can be made as 20.05 LPI due to various factors during the manufacturing process. By the same token, a 720 DPI printer can actually be 719.95 DPI for various reasons. By performing a pitch test we can offset the errors. You can download the trial version of our software to do the pitch test. The link to download the software is shown on the screen. Although it's a trial version, the pitch test portion of the software is totally open so you can use it as many times as you want. In the next minutes or so we will show you the steps to print a pitch test pattern. Start the three dependable software from the desktop. Choose the pitch test icon from the far right icon on the toolbar. Since we are using a 20 LPI lens so put 20 in the central bar field, and put 0.1 LPI for the delta, 10 mm for the bar height and 2 mm for the spacing. For the resolution field, choose the resolution that matches your printer. For example, 600 for HP and 720 for Epson. For the print size, choose, letter, if you are in the US, or, A4, if you are outside of the US. Click the output button. Save the pitch test pattern file on your computer. Print the pitch test pattern using Photoshop or other programs of your choice. Remember to choose the correct resolution when you print. For example, on Epson printers choose the best photo and the paper type that matches the paper you are going to use. 
Once the pattern is printed, cover it with the lenticular sheet with the grooves of the lens facing up. Align the sheet so that the lines on the left are straight without jagging. Choose the number next to the bar that is totally black or totally white. In our case, the number is 20.1. We are going to use this number to do another run of the test as the central bar figure. In the second run, we put 20.1 as the central bar and tighten the delta to 0.01 mm. Save and print it. Follow the same procedure as the first run to find the best fit number. In the second run, you will likely find more than one total black bar. Simply choose the one lie in the middle. For example, 20.12 in this case. Interlacing the pictures. With the value of the pitch test, we are going to do the most important step, interlacing the pictures. What interlacing means is that the two images will be sliced into stripes and merged adjacent to each other. In this tutorial, we are going to use Photoshop to complete this task. Let's bring the two pictures into Photoshop. Cut and paste one of the pictures on top of the other one. Set the image size to the desired dimension and set the resolution of the pictures to 362.16, which comes from the formula 18 times 20.12. Remember our lens has a density of 20.12, right? But why multiply it by 18? The reason is we want to have 18 pixels under each lenticule. Don't worry if you don't understand this part. You don't need to be a mathematician to make good lenticular prints. With 18 pixels behind each lenticule in mind, we want to have 9 pixels for image 1 and the other 9 pixels for image 2. To achieve this, we are going to use a mask on one of the images. To create the mask pattern let's create a new Photoshop file with 18 pixels wide and 1 pixel tall. Make the first 9 pixels black in whichever way you prefer and keep the rest of the 9 pixels empty. Select all the pixels and then go to Edit, Define Pattern to create a pattern. Going back to our two image file and select the top layer. Create a mask layer for it and fill it with the pattern we just create. There you go, the interlaced image has been created. You can merge all the layers and save the file. Laminating Once we have printed the interlaced picture we just need to follow these steps to laminate the lens onto the print. Put the double-side adhesive on top of the interlaced picture. Move them to a laminator and put them under the roller. Tighten the roller and keep about 5 to 6 inches on the side of the roller closer to yourself. Lift the double-side adhesive and peel off the protective paper. Fold the peeled off paper inward and press the area along the fold line. Move the roller forward so the sticky part of the double-side adhesive merges with the interlaced picture. From the other side of the roller pull the folded up paper to expose the sticky part of the double-side adhesive. Move the roller backwards so the double-side adhesive and the interlaced picture become one piece. At this point, one side of the double-side adhesive has stuck to the interlaced picture and a transparent protective film still covers the other side. Cover the lenticular lens on top of the interlaced picture and double-side adhesive combo with the grooves of the lens facing up and put them on a flat surface. Move the lens left and right and up and down to the best position so only one of the images can be seen. Move your head left and right to see if the other picture will show up. When the lens position is good, secure it with some masking tapes. Now take all these back to the laminator and put them under the roller with the grooves of the lens facing down and the back side of the interlaced picture facing up. Tighten the roller and keep about 5 to 6 inches on the side of the roller closer to yourself. Lift up the interlaced picture adhesive combo and remove the masking tapes. With the help of a masking tape lift the protective film off the adhesive side to expose the sticky part of the double side adhesive. Fold the film inward and then move the roller forward so the lens and the interlaced picture merge together. From the other side of the roller remove the masking tapes and pull up the folded up protective film to expose the sticky part of the double side adhesive. Move the roller backward to complete the bonding. Trim the edges with a razor knife, and voila, a lenticular print with flipping crouton has been created. Thanks for watching. I am sure you now agree that making a lenticular flip is not that difficult. Why not make one for your parents, spouse, or lover? It will be fun and rewarding and whoever receives it will be impressed. But if you don't want to go through the tasks of printing and to laminate, you can hire us to make the print for you. Go to this page. 
drag and drop two pictures to submit your order. We can ship the lenticular print to you on the same day. If you find this video helpful please press the like, subscribe, and notification buttons. Leave us a message if you have questions. Happy flipping with lenticular. See you next time.